Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you the Sisterhood of the World tag. So I was tagged by both Lisa over at Books and Smiles and Jen over at Today in Jen's Library to do the Sisterhood of the World tag. Now this is a really, really interesting and quite different tag in that... They have been through a whole list of questions by the person that they were tagged and have answered them and then when they finish the tag, they then pick 10 questions and when they tag people, the people they tag do those questions. So I was tagged by both Jen and Lisa, so therefore I have questions from both of them to answer. So I'm just meshing them all into one video and I'm going to answer the 10 questions from Lisa, the 10 questions from Jen, and then I'll be tagging some people and I have questions for the people that I tag to answer. So it's really fun because the questions change each time that the tag is, you know, goes on through all the taggies and it just sounds like a really really fun time so let's jump straight in with the 10 questions that Lisa asked me question number one from Lisa you walk into a bookstore and are greeted with three free books of your choice can be pre-orders what do you choose so for this one I basically went through my book depository wish list and sorted them by the most expensive books on those wish lists because they're ones that'll probably take me longer to purchase because they are expensive. And so the three kind of ones that I have on my wish list that are quite expensive are Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. That is a thriller book that people will have been absolutely raving about. I want to read it so, so bad, but it is really expensive. Um, Merciless 2 by Danielle Vega. That is the sequel to Merciless. And I want the hardcover book because I've got that the first, I should have brought it in with me, but the first book is that um, it's like a pink cloth bound hardback with like no dust jacket. And I believe that the second one matches, but it's like a gold cloth bound. And I want the like two books because I think they're just going to look really gorgeous next to each other. But again, it's expensive. And then we have The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel, um, which I, I don't know. There's something about that book and I want to read it so, so badly. Mel from over at That Girl Bookworm recently read it and she really loved it. And again, it's really expensive. So those are the three books that I would pick to get for free if I could. Next we have what book do you think should be taught in school and for that one I have gone with Jasper Jones by Craig Sylvie. I don't know if this is taught in school in Australia, it wasn't when I was in school or at least I didn't learn it. Um, and this has been um, referenced as the Australian To Kill a Mockingbird and obviously To Kill a Mockingbird is a book that is very famously taught in schools. So this is a book set in rural um, Australia in the late 60s, early 70s. I can't remember exactly when it is. And it, oh, tail end of 1965, according to the back. And it is about a young boy who is sleeping one night when a local Aboriginal boy, who's like the local kind of bad boy, knocks on his window and asks for Charlie's help. And that is, and the boy's name is Jasper Jones, who knocks on his window. And that is where the story kind of kicks off. It's got a lot of racial issues. It is set during the time of the Vietnam War and um, Charlie's best friend is Vietnamese and you see a lot of how, even though they're in Australia and how the Vietnamese family is treated within this really rural area in Australia during the Vietnamese war. You also obviously have the racial issues with, um, Jasper Jones being an Aboriginal ch child and all of the kind of, you know, prejudices and racist stuff that happens along with that. And you've also got a really like mystery creepy aspect to this because there is a whole mystery aspect to the story in what, um, Jasper Jones wants Charlie to help him with. And this is just a really, really good book. Everyone I know who've re who's read this has really, really loved it. And I really, really loved it. I believe I gave this 4.5 stars. I don't know why I only gave it 4.5 because looking back, it's one of those books I can easily see myself giving five stars. But I definitely think that this should be taught in school. And that could like bring up some really good discussions, particularly in Australia with the addition of the kind of like Aboriginal issues in this book. Question number three, if you could interview any author living, who would it be and why? So for this one, I have decided to go with Sarah Dessen. So if you didn't know, Sarah Dessen is one of my favorite authors. She's been one of my favorite authors since I was a teenager. I've read every book that she's published with the exception of her most recent release, which I do own and I'm hoping to get to soon. And I've just loved her for a really long time. And I would love to just sit down with her and just talk about all of her books and you know, how she came up with all the ideas and why she's written the books the way that she's done and the slightly different ones like uh, Dreamland, my favorite by her, is quite different from her other books and I would like to talk about, you know, all of her inspirations and why that one was quite different. She then had another book, The Moon and Morn, which she kind of went down a bit of a different path with and did not receive. It's probably my least favorite book of hers, to be honest. Didn't receive as 
great uh, reviews. And I would also just love to talk to her about, she is a young adult author, but has been writing young adult for like a really, really long time, like back when young adult was really just kind of becoming a thing. And I would love to chat to her about that and what it was like in that time and how the young adult kind of publishing industry has changed. There's just so much I would love to talk to her about. We could sit down and have a good old chat, let me tell you. And I would probably just love to sit down and chat with Sarah Dessen. Question number four from Lisa is, what fictional character can you relate to most? And I'm sorry, I have to go with the real cop out here and I just do not have an answer for this. I've looked through my entire bookshelves, I went through pages and pages of my read books on Goodreads trying to find something and I know that like there are characters that I've related to, like different aspects of characters. Sometimes I think, oh that's really relatable when I'm reading. But looking back I just couldn't think of who any of those characters were and I can't think of any one character, like there's always certain things like I read a book um, series this year about a girl who starts at a new school and her experience of being the new girl at school, I really related to that because my family moved around when I was growing up and I've been the new girl at school and it's shit. And so I really relate to that aspect, but her as a character generally, I don't really relate to. And so do you know what I mean? Like there's different aspects, but there's just not one character that I could think of that I'm like, you, you are me as a character. So unfortunately I just don't really have an answer for this one. Question number five, recommend an underrated book. So for that one, I have decided to go with a book I had. I don't think I've talked about for a while on my channel, and that is Exposed by Kimberly Marcus. This is a really short young adult book, and it is written in verse, so it is a really, really quick read. I gave this five stars when I read it. It is about two girls who are best friends, have been best friends for forever, when there is this one event that takes place that completely changes the course of their friendship and how who they are as people and how their friendship is and all of that and this friendship themes I've mentioned a lot on this channel it's one of my favorite things ever to read about and this book just really really spoke to me um I loved the whole thing really and I've never heard a single other person talk about this so this is definitely an underrated book Question number six, what series do you want to see be made into a movie or TV series? For this one I have two. I would really like both the Cascade Girls series by Alice Arden to be made into um, a movie or a TV series, I think. It could be a really good TV series. So this is set in New Orleans, which is a totally awesome setting, kind of like the originals with like, it's got witches and vampires and voodoo and it's got like a lot of like flashbacks to the past and it's got covens and it's just I could totally I, I can see the aesthetic of the show like in my mind and it would be totally gorgeous another one that I think would be really really great setting is the Diviners series by Libba Bray I could totally see this as a movie or a tv series this is set in the 1920s and it's like a really creepy like I could just, again, the aesthetic of this show, if they made it into a TV show or a movie, would just be totally on point, I think. Question seven, share a quote from a book you love. So this isn't necessarily a book that I love. I have here The Love That Split the World by Emily Henry. I gave this 3.75 stars. I do have a review for it. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the cards. But there is a quote in this book that I just resonates with me deeply and that I really, really loved, and that is, the world is going to keep right on being beautiful and terrible at the same time. And I just really, really love that quote. Question number eight, what is the oldest book on your TBR? And at the current time of filming, that is Slammed by Colleen Hoover. This is the book that has been on my TBR the longest. I received this for my birthday, I think. And, and yeah, it was in 2015, so my birthday's already been this year. I've had this for over two years. Question number nine, best standalone book you've read this year. I mentioned this recently in my mid-year book freakout tag, and that is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. It's the best book I've read so far this year. Um, I haven't read any five-star, like, new-to-me books this year, which is, is disappointing. This is a gothic, mystery, creepy type story about a man who's was raised by his male, older male cousin, and it's always just kind of been the two of them, and they grew up with, you know, just the boys, and one day when he's grown, his uncle has not been well, and he goes to, like, France, I think it is, for, or Italy, I think it's Florence, maybe, for his health, like, to be in the sunshine during the colder months, and he marries this woman, Rachel, while he is over, while he is over there, and he ends up dying before he returns to um, where the main character in that's home is, and the main character inherits everything, and then the woman who he married eventually comes to visit him, and it all kind of kicks off from there. It is a totally, totally good time, and a book that I highly recommend. 
And the final question from Lisa was recommend three booktubers with under 500 subscribers. This was actually harder than I thought it was going to be. Most of the booktubers who I am like most connected with are kind of between 500 and 1000 subscribers. And so, but I did go through and I do have three to recommend. So the first one I recommend, want to recommend is Kath Elizabeth Reads. So Kath is a channel that I subscribed to fairly recently. She is from the United Kingdom and I've been really enjoying her videos. I also have Mel from over at That Girl Bookworm. Um, Mel has and I have been friends on Booktube for like a really, really long time. Mel is from Canada. She has less than 500 subscribers and it's another channel I really, really enjoy. And finally, I have Sarah from over at Sarah Paper Words. Sarah is a fellow Australian Booktuber from Adelaide. We actually found each other on Twitter on a thread that was going around about like introducing yourself and your channel. And I saw her mention that she was from South Australia on that thread and I immediately commented and was like, hey, I'm from South Australia as well. And it turns out we're both from Adelaide. And so that was really, really exciting. And I totally love her channel. She's also a Hufflepuff. So we have that in common as well. So those were Lisa's 10 questions. Now we'll move on to the 10 questions that I was asked by Jen. So the first of Jen's question was, Jen's questions was, what is your favorite childhood picture book? So for that, I think I've mentioned this book before on my channel, but it is Belinda by Pamela Allen. This is a picture book that I remember reading so, so often as a child. Pamela Allen is, I believe she's actually born in New Zealand, but I think she like lives in Australia and is quite a prolific children's book author in Australia. She's like got so, so many books. Um, and this is my favorite one that I remember reading. It is about a cow and when the farmer's wife who always milks the cow goes away and the cow and the farmer has to milk the cow himself, hijinks ensue. And I just remember thinking this book was so hilarious when I was a kid. Question number two, are you happy with your bookshelves? What would you change? Um, I don't know if I would say that I'm happy. My book, my actual, like the actual bookshelves are quite old now and I've had them for a really long time. And some of the shelves you can't really see, but some of them, especially higher up, are like buckled, like they're bent. They're not even really straight anymore. I would love to buy new bookshelves, but they're actually quite expensive. And I don't, I would like to get four. I only have three in here, but I don't think I could fit four across this wall, which is really disappointing. And I don't, when I get three and I do have another small one in my room where I keep my TBR because I wanted that to be a nice cute little space but ugh, my TBR like half of my TBR books are just on the floor in my room because I can't fit them so I really need to sort out that situation. Also I have a lot of books on here that I could probably get rid of but you know it just hasn't happened so I'm not like completely unhappy with them but I'm, I don't, I'm not like in love with them or anything. Question number three, how often do you unhaul books? Not very often. When I moved to Adelaide. So I was living in Canberra before I lived in Adelaide and when I moved here I went through all of the books on my bookshelf that I wanted to get rid of and I put them in a box. That box is literally over here. I've, I've moved house since then. I've moved into this house that I own and that box of books came with me. I haven't even gotten rid of them. That is partly because I wanted to donate them to a secondhand bookshop where I could hopefully get credit for them and spend that. And we just don't really have those anywhere in Adelaide or not anywhere that I've really been able to find. So I have donated a few books here and there um, to like just charity organizations, but I haven't gotten rid of all of them. And I also only really go through these shelves and take books off when I run out of space. So and that's something I actually am getting close to. I'm kind of fitting things in at the moment and I'm pretty sure soon I'm actually going to go through all of my shelves and take off everything and reorganize them and take off everything that like is not a book that I super super loved and end up donating those at some point or putting them in a box where they'll live for you know the next however long but I definitely don't unhaul books as often as I should. Question four, fess up, do you watch Game of Thrones or have you read the books? I do not watch Game of Thrones but I have read the books. So interesting situation, I read all of the, they're actually on my shelf somewhere, I'm looking for them, where are they? They're here, I don't know if you can see, it. yes these are my Game of Thrones books, I've read all of the five books and I really enjoyed them at the time that I've read them, which was surprising to me actually because I haven't read a lot of high, like really, like that is like high, high fantasy. And I haven't read a lot of that. So I did enjoy them. And I think I originally read them, I can't really remember now because I read them a few years ago with the intention of watching the show. If you've watched many of my vlogs, I've talked about the talking, I've talked about this, I've talked about this a few times that I have been in a TV slump. People are in book slumps. I've never had a book slump. I'm in a TV slump. I just, for some reason, it's partly to do with booktube, to be honest. I'm so behind in my subscription feed and all the videos that I watch. I spend most of my free time trying to catch up. 
which I never managed to catch up. And so I don't have as much free time to just sit and binge shows. And so, and when I'm really dedicated to shows, so once I start a show, I don't like to watch anything else until I finish that show, which is really stupid because sometimes when I fall out of love a bit with the show, I won't watch anything else and then I won't watch that because I'm not in love with it, so I just watch nothing. It's really stupid and people rave about Game of Thrones and I'm constantly saying, oh, don't say anything, like don't spoil me because even though I know that I've read the books, like stuff is quite different from in the show now, I know and people just rave about it and I want to know what everyone's talking about, but that and about a million other shows I've never watched, but I have read the books. This is my long-winded way of saying I've read the books, haven't seen the show. Question number five, what's your favorite Christian or spiritual book? Um, this one was a little bit difficult for me. I don't personally identify as Christian and I don't read a lot of Christian or spiritual books. Um, but a book that I did think of was Making Faces by Amy Harmon. This is a, it's actually a new adult romance, but it does have Christian themes in it. And while I was aware at the time that I was reading it that the Christian themes were there, it wasn't like you were being hit over the head with them. Me as a non-Christian person, it didn't bother me, the Christian themes in it at all. And I actually think that for a Christian romance, this one is done really, really well as a non-Christian person. So if you are a non-Christian person who is worried about reading Christian fiction, I would check out this new adult romance because it is definitely, definitely, it's one of my favorite new adult romances I've ever read, to be honest. Question number six, what's your favorite biography or memoir? Now this one, again, I don't, I'm really sorry if you can hear my washing machine right now. When my washing machine gets towards the end of its cycle, it's really, really loud. Um, anyway, I don't read too many biographies or memoirs. I do read them and I do enjoy them, but I've never read one that I've just been like, wow, that is an amazing memoir. So rather than telling you my favorite, because I don't really have one, I thought I'd tell you the two most like anticipated I have that I really want to check out. And they are Wild by Cheryl Strait and The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. They're two that I've heard amazing things about and that I really, really want to check out. Question number seven, hardback or paperback or ebook or audio? Please say audio. So Jen, if you didn't know, listens to almost exclusively audiobooks. She does read as well, but she listens to a crap ton of audiobooks. I'm sorry, Jen, but out of the four, I would say paperbacks is my most preferred way to read books. If we're just going hardbacks versus paperbacks, I would say paperbacks, but or ebooks or versus audio, I don't really know what I would choose. I'm into both of those. But overall, I would say paperback's probably my most preferred method. But I do love listening to audiobooks. I like listening to audiobooks because I can do that while I'm doing other things, which is not something I can do with ebooks or hardbacks or paperbacks. So audiobooks I do love, but paperbacks would be my mode of choice. Question number eight, what is your favorite series? Saying Harry Potter is cheating. So if saying Harry Potter is cheating, because obviously I would pick Harry Potter, I don't have like a favorite that like beats out all of the others besides Harry Potter. So I thought I'd just mention a few series that I really, really love. The Grisha Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo, I really love. The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins, I really, really love. The Refame series by Paula Weston, I really adored. And most recently, you'll be hearing about this more in my mid-month wrap up, but The Raven Cycle by Nagy Steve Otter, I also really, really loved. Question number nine, what do you do while you listen to audiobooks? So this is actually interesting. This ties into what I was just saying about audiobooks. The thing I love most about audiobooks is that I can listen to them while I'm doing other things. So with my, I listen to audiobooks basically exclusively through Overdrive and the Overdrive app will run in the background on my phone. So I can be listening to that while I'm doing other things on my phone. So mostly what I'm doing is I'm on the bus, on the way to work or walking to the bus, etc. And I've got the audiobook playing, but I'm on my phone checking my Facebook and my Twitter and Instagram and my emails and everything that I do on my phone in the morning. So I normally listen to the audiobook while I'm doing that. And then once I've checked everything, I then normally pause the audiobook and I move on to my physical book while I'm sitting there on the bus. I also do occasionally listen to it while I'm doing things around the house. Although normally while I'm doing that, I watch booktube or I listen to booktube um, because I'm so far up behind in my subscription feed in case you didn't hear me mention that earlier. And because I don't need to use my phone for anything else while I'm doing that, I can watch the booktube videos. But while I want to do other things on my phone, I, I listen to audiobooks. Basically, that's when I'm doing it. And the final question from Jen, what is your opinion on adult coloring books? Um, I don't really have too much of an opinion. They're not for me. I was never a huge colorer as a child. And I'm just, I've never attempted really to color in an adult coloring book. It's just not really my thing, to be honest. There are so many other things I would rather be doing than coloring. But I do know that a lot of people use it as like a really, like it's a really good de-stressor for them. Um, and so I'm for it if that's something that you're into or something that you really enjoy. It's just personally not something that I'm really into. 
So those were all of the questions from Jen and I answered all the questions from Lisa. So I am going to tag five people in this tag. So I'm going to tag the three girls that I mentioned who had over 500 subscribers, Mel, Sarah and Kath. And I'm also going to um, tag Aoife from over at Fred Weasley Died Laughing and Derby over at Derby Lane Reading because I would love to see all of their answers to my 10 questions that I've come up with. I'm very quickly going to go through my 10 questions. I will leave them down below for you guys who have tagged so that you can easily see the questions. But question number one is who is your most read author? Question number two, recommend an underhyped book. Question number three, when you think about a book that makes you angry, what is the first book that comes to mind? Why did it make you mad? Question number four, how often do you unhaul books? Question number five, scariest or creepiest book you've read? Question number six, do you read multiple books at once or only one at a time? Question number seven, the ugliest book cover you own? Question number eight, book you're most embarrassed you haven't read yet? Question number nine, your most overhyped book or series? And question number 10 is read us the first sentence of your current read. So I borrowed one question from Lisa, one question from Jen, and then came up with eight other questions of my own. I'm really, I'm really happy with those, that list of questions, to be honest. I can't wait to see everyone's answers. So that was the tag. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts on any of my answers or want to chat in the comments down below, I would totally love that. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.